and the moment that everyone was waiting for. We have exclusive access to the pre-launch of the new By Mars Tracker, with all the features and more. And finally, after two long years, NAB is back, we were able to touch things and be up to date with the latest technology for virtual production, like a subscribe to have access to the full NAB 2022 update on virtual production and virtual production tools. But first, an updated bio tracker system, specifically designed for virtual production. But let's go first with the bio tracker video presentation and then jump straight to the interview. Since the launch of our first Vive VR system, indie creators through major studios have been using our hardware to blend production tools with virtual worlds. It's a natural fit, but for virtual production, the DIY solution had challenges. The filmmaking community inspired us to make it better. Introducing Vive Mars CamTrack, virtual production made simple. Mars makes pipelines fast, easy, and affordable by consolidating the entire camera tracking workflow into a compact, plug-and-play solution with professional-grade features. The barrier to entry was pretty massive if you didn't know the landscape already. But with Mars, it's basically like a plug-and-play system where I can get those project files from anywhere in the world that are absolutely gorgeous and then have them set up within like 15 minutes. Vive Mars is the most affordable professional camera tracking solution in the market. And it does so by leveraging the Vive Tracker technology, but combining it with Genlock and Timecode support, which is essential for professional production. When it comes to lens calibration, which is traditionally one of the most time-consuming things to get right, with Mars, the fact that the calibration board is something that's also tracked has given us way more flexibility and leniency. It's becoming way more fault tolerance. My DIY tracking system that I had built is just not up to snuff. We had loose cables, things were falling apart, we were losing tracking. When HTC hit me up and said, hey, Sam, we've got a magic box that's going to solve all your problems. I was like, well, I, I would certainly love to use it. We got a shot. It works. What attracted me to filmmaking when I first started, and I, it's even still to this day, is when technology intersects with affordability and ease of use. It's all about that magic for that very first time of turning something on and going, wow, like, ooh, I, I have something really special here. I think we finally have this really nice intersection when it comes to creating your own virtual production system. Vive Mars CamTrack supports up to three rovers to track the camera, props, and even lights to shine in both the physical and virtual world. I wanted, we had various stage setups. We wanted to move the tracking volume around. It was really good for us to be able to just go, right, let's move the trackers around here. Okay, hit the reset button on the panel, track it to, doop, done. With the Mars system, it's taking that entire complicated tracking workflow, putting it into one module, so it's getting out of your way so you can get right to the creative and telling your stories. We're so excited to join the next era of filmmaking with Vive Mars ChemTrack as our first dedicated entry in virtual production. We'll take care of the technology so you can focus on the content. Vive Mars ChemTrack. Virtual production made simple. So what you have here is the Mars Hub, 
and then you have the rover. You know the tracker, right? The tracker 3.8, and you know the base station. This is basically all being powered through POE, so Ethernet, right? Professionals who are using this for like over eight hours, they really don't want to, you know, figure out where their like Bluetooth connection has like co-channel interference, right? Basically, you can see the Ethernet goes to the Mars, right? And then the Mars then uh, using the Ethernet goes directly, and we're uh, live link compatible, so you can just see right there. With the Mars, what it is, it's Steam VR inside here, but it's basically taking it away from your computer, right? And then taking away all that uh, a CPU uh, processing power and putting it into this Mars module. Inside here is uh, it's, it's a little bit like customized Steam VR, so like um, it doesn't have you don't have to update things like you know the HMD. Yeah, you don't need any of that anymore. You don't need ro room calibration. So basically, uh, if you do knock over anything, it's uh -huh. just simply just like a reset and you're good to go. So it's, it's optimized for VR, right? So with VR, you need to mark your play space, right? That's why there's that uh, the whole process in the beginning. You really wouldn't be hitting the base station as you're playing. With filming, right, that's gonna happen quite frequently. So a lot of studios in the beginning when they're playing out with our system, they have SteamVR installed, you know, yeah, on top of right. uh, running SteamVR behind uh, Real. What that's doing is actually taking up, you know, the CPU, the computing away from your game engine. That's why we feel we should optimize a processing unit dedicated just for tracking. So I, I see it has a shambo, right? Yes, if you can come here. So behind there's uh, several ports. So there, there's a, a Genlock port right here, and there's a, a time code in, right? So both of these are necessary for a, a good composite in virtual production. In the front, you see like we have the Genlock plugged in. Okay. So you see the uh, it's coming at 29.97. Probably the, the workflow, how, how Okay, the workflow? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so of course you have your uh, plugin installed in Unreal. Over here, right, you just add source. If all the light indicators are on, when you slide over to the, the source, you'll see that from your Mars. When you click on that, the rover that's being currently being tracked is going to display here. The rover is ready to be assigned to an actor in the engine to synchronize, right, with right. whatever is your camera or some other. So we already pulled up a virtual camera and assigned that to one of the rovers, which is this one here. So if I were to move this camera, right, you can see on the composite image, it's gonna line up, right? Everything's gonna line up. Yeah, so this is like the, when you calibrate your space, basically uh, you take this, there's a button here, right? So when you press uh, the center here, so that's, that's rover one, I believe. So you press one here. Right, so the scene will shift. Got it. Right. But yeah, so that's like your scene center, your virtual center um, uh, of this entire stage. Like traditionally, right, the way you can right. the, the surface, like uh, interactive your, your real stage to the virtual stage is kind of just eye it, right? Because, uh, yeah, look at, it, look at the, the, the screen. So how do we calibrate that, right? So the best way to find put it on the chair, mm -hmm. right? So you just kind of move it until you see it. Kind of overlay this on the chair on the virtual seat, right? And once it's there, it looks like I'm on the way. Yeah, so that will that will match up, right? So when I can the camera, this butt is not gonna move. Right? That is the exact position in the virtual seat. So this is another way you can play with uh, the rover. This this here, what we did here is we attached a a light to this rover and then we attach a physical light to uh, to mimic the same direction right of the virtual light the virtual is going to line up with the, the the real light direction okay yeah so aligning the uh, real camera position to our a rover is one thing, right? So that the camera would, would sync up the positions. But uh, for the for the cameraman, they also want to play with values like the focal length, the focus, and our uh, rover actually support lens encoders. We have a, a lens encoder from LoLED. Yeah, so we, we attach it to the focus, right? So if I were to try to find a something to focus on, right, it, it's actually going to change in the scene. So yeah, so our rover supports up to uh, three different lens encoders. So we, we have like three respective USB ports. So depending on where you mount it, you just have to wire it and plug it in back here. And what encoders yeah. you, you support right now? Right now, we, we just started using this. So this is IndieMark and we also have 
tried it with uh, Glassmark. Another f feature that we have, we have a calibration tool to help uh, calibrate the camera, the nodal point offset from our tracker, right? So, um, so before in, with Unreal, you had an, one person holding the track and waving it around, another person behind the PC clicking the, the little LEDs, right? So it takes, you know, if you're really good, maybe you could do it in 15 minutes, right? But what we did here is made a very uh, intuitive UI. So like the, the hitboxes, when it captures the sample, it just moves on to the next position. So you could, basically a camera man can get the 48 samples done within like five minutes. Right? And, and that, those sure. data, yeah, yeah, one person. So that will be, those data then will be keyed into the lens file in Unreal. Yeah, so that's, that's the, that's like our solution. Can we talk about pricing right now? Yeah, that's oh. a big one. <laughs> you know, we, we aim to make this as affordable as possible so that many people can, you know, who want to have access to virtual production can have it, right? Our tagline is virtual production made simple. So, of course, the price has to be right. So, uh, the price is $5,000 and that includes one Mars, the three rovers support up to three cameras, you know, two base stations and two trackers for you. And also the, the calibration. Yeah, the calibration. So right now, because, you, you know, manufacturing supply issues and everything, right, we have an extremely limited quantity. But, but we really want to get them out to the, the community and the people that really, really need it. And to get that, like, uh, valuable feedback of, and, and to be able to make this product better. So right now we have on the May 25th, uh, our early bird program. And you have uh, how many? We can't really say, but right. we can say it's quite limited. Further down the line, when we have an actual commercial, um, be able to do the commercial release, we'll, we'll be able to have like a good quantity of them coming through. But right now it's so inconsistent. We, won't, we don't want to, you know, over promise yeah. anything. So right now we're just like, we, we, it's very limited quantity. Okay. Uh, right now it's only um, America and Europe only so far. Okay, there is a second part of this presentation. Stay tuned and obviously we have the rest of NAB 2022. And I want to take the chance to thank all the Vive Mars team for having us and also to the Facebook group Virtual Production with Unreal Engine Group. And if you're new to the channel, like or subscribe for anything Virtual Production related. Okay, so I'm going back to the show and see you next time.